Well, hello there everyone and welcome to a new video over here on Anton's Hardware Channel. Now, as you may have seen, I have surpassed 400 subscribers. So thank you all for those who have subscribed and thank you in advance for those who are going to subscribe to my channel. It is a well, big deal to me to see that there are some people in the world that enjoy my content. At least I enjoy creating the content and I hope you do too. And today we're going to talk about a sound card and not just any sound card, but a Sennheiser external sound card. And it's uh, this one, and it is supposed to have high resolution audio in stereo mode, uh, stereo mode. So how good is that high resolution audio? Let's find out in this video. This external sound card was released a couple of months ago in 2020 during the Corona high times. Well, it's still Corona high times, uh, but it was released in June, July of this year. And it is the smaller brother of the GSX 1000 and GSX 1200 also made by Sennheiser and it's the GSX 300. It's the smaller brother. Now the bigger brothers are 200 plus euros and this one is only 80 euros, I was going to say 300. No, it's only 80 euros, so it's a lot cheaper than its brothers. And I was wondering, um, is this going to be another external sound card failure like I had so many before, or is this getting better? Let's find out in the specifications what's going on. In stereo mode, this sound card will deliver the sound with 24 bits and 96 kilohertz. In surround sound mode, it will go down to 16 bits and 48 kilohertz. Now, especially those 16 bits and 48 kilohertz isn't, well, impressive, and that's an understatement. It reminds me of the days when I had my Sound Blaster 16 bits in an ISA slot. Now, these days, a 24-bit and 192 kilohertz is the minimum specification I want to have on a sound card. But since I don't use the surround mode anyways, uh, because it mainly deforms audio, the 16-bit doesn't bother me that much. Uh, Sennheiser says it's working on an upgrade and hopes to support high-res 7.1 processing soon. Now, if that comes in the form of a driver or a firmware upgrade or a GSX 400 model, a model I just couldn't find out. The recommended headphone impedance is 25 to 75 ohm, which is standard. It weighs just 309 grams, which is really light. And for those who do not adhere to the metric system, that's about 11 ounces. Sennheiser themselves says the GSX 300 has a total harmonic distortion of less than 0,01%. So what did my Rightmark audio analyzer measurements find out? Let's go head over there. These are the results from Rightmark audio analyzer. Now the general performance is rated at good with three averages, the noise level, the dynamic range and the stereo crosstalk. Now, especially the dynamic range is somewhat of a downer. Dynamic range is the ratio of the loudest undistorted sound to the quietest discernible sound expressed in decibels. That is what a system is capable of producing. So the higher the better. The more expensive sound cards tend to hit 100, others 80 or 90. So this one is on the low side, but still average according to Rightmark. As the frequency response graph shows, it is almost perfectly flat and it gets an excellent. Now this is an impressive feat for such a small and cheap external sound card. As for the aforementioned total harmonic distortion, this Sennheiser claims to get an 0,01%. According to my measurement, it gets a 0,00617%. So that's more than correct. Now, if I was working at the marketing department at Sennheiser, I would say it's 0,005%, but that's just me. Overall, this sound card gets a good, which is impressive for it's only just 80 euros. And this is what the driver interface looks like. This is the dashboard where you will start up. 
And here you can see the status, the software version and the device firmware version. Now, when I first plugged in the device, it automatically updated the firmware on the GSX 300. So I was rather happy with that. Now here's some uh, commercial marketing things here. You can discover new products, report a bug. The smart button, that's the button on the front of the device. Here you can set it to surround sound or another preset switcher for the equalizer. I don't use that. I well also don't use the surround sound, but it is there. And here you can head over to the microphone settings settings where you can change your voice to warmer or clearer, make it louder, set the side tone so you can hear your own voice when you're speaking, the noise gate, which means that it will uh, not surpass a certain volume, and noise cancellation, so that's any debris from outside of your microphone maybe your wife screaming at you that you have to stop stop playing and here so here's the playback where you can change the mode to 7.1 and you can also change the equalizer to some presets music for instance esports and movie now i always leave it to flat why well i think it's better and this is what happens when you press the smart button. The blue light turns to red and it's now in surround sound 7.1 mode. And you can just as easily switch it off. Listing sessions were kind of pleasant. And during the last couple of weeks, I have tested a lot of sound cards. For instance, the G1, uh, which is in the previous video which I thought was horrible. One of the worst sound cards I have heard for a long time. And so I was thinking, well, how good does, is this one? But as I was listening, the highs were high, the bass was there, it wasn't all too pompous. It was a nice, pleasant listening session. The placement of the instruments was very good. It was, well, it, where they were supposed to be. Uh, nothing was overpowered. The sounds were well defined and the whole experience was very good. Well, this is a testament that you do not need a very expensive 32-bit sound card to get decent quality sound. During my gaming sessions, the highs were, well, sometimes a bit too high, a bit sharpish, but it was never very unpleasant. And now during gaming, you might want to hear a bit more high sounds because you can hear the footsteps of your enemies getting closer a bit faster than maybe your enemy can hear you. So that's uh, somewhat of a plus on this sound card. So, my conclusion, would I recommend this sound card? Well, yes, I would. For 80 euros, you would get a very good external sound card. Now, it's not a giant leap from onboard sound, but it's at least it's a good step forward. Uh, you get a stylish uh, driver interface. The design of the device itself is, well, very nice. And indeed, for just a such a small device, it's very nice. The sound quality was very good, despite being so, well, on the downside, on the 24 bits and 96 kilohertz, but the listening sessions were very good indeed. Now, there was one downside, and it was when I was fiddling around with Rightmark Audio Analyzer to get some results there, I did find it very hard to reinitialize the external sound cards after some fiddling around. Now, that's not something that you may encounter during day-to-day -day use, so it's just me when fiddling around as I do. Uh, but I had to uninstall the driver, uninstall the USB drivers and install them again. And well, it wasn't such a pleasant experience on that side, but that's the only major downside that I got from this external sound card. Otherwise, it is a very good sound card. Yeah. For those who are wondering why is uh, Night of the Dead in the background there, well, it's not, well, it's sort of accidental. I just found, found out after reviewing my recordings. Um, I was planning on finishing up on recording these videos and ju then jump back, right back into gaming uh, because I wanted to do some gaming with my friends. And so it, that's why it's there. It's not because I'm getting paid or anything. It's just, I forgot to turn it off. That's it for me for today. Thank you for now and I hope to see you in the next video.